How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining me with another math lesson with Mr. Woodford. Uh, today, we're going to continue to work on our unit six uh, concept, proportions and percents. As you have noticed in lesson 6.1, 6.2, 6.2a, we have talked about uh, percents. We have talked about um, quickly calculating the percent of a number by turning that percent into a decimal, then multiplying it by the number. Today, we continue that understanding of percents of numbers uh, by working on lesson 6.2b. If you have your packet with us, please open it up to 6.2b, where we're talking about proportional reasoning with percents. Uh, and I believe the next couple lessons will do that. I know we talked about a little bit about parts, whole, and percent in the last lesson. We will expand on that concept a little bit in this lesson, but I know even more so, I believe, in 6.2c. Uh, let's look at the bell work. As usual, take a moment, pause the video, and work on the bell work. Excellent. Hopefully you had enough time to be able to work on the bell work. Let me quickly go through this with you. I'll give you the answers uh, and you can check your answers. Make sure that they are correct. Make sure they're hundred percent right. All right. Okay. So let's start off 0% of 132 is zero. Uh, 132. Sorry, 132. I actually said it and then wrote it incorrectly. <sighs> uh, 132 is 100% of 132. Make sure nothing is rubbing against the keypad here because it keeps glitching. I'm trying to. Excellent. 50% of 132 uh, is 1656. Let me double check that, make sure it's right. 15. No, nope, I lied. Give me not 56. Fifteen. That's sixteen. Sixteen plus fifty. Sixty-six. Okay. Twenty-five percent of that. Half of that is thirty-three. And if I add those two numbers together, I get ninety-nine. Right. Twenty percent of thirty-five. First, you should have found ten percent of thirty-five, which is equal to three point five. 30 percent. I mean, twenty percent rather. That's multiplying that by two, and gave us seven. And 60%, which is multiplying that by six, right? Uh, or multiplying this by three would have gave you 21, okay? This is our bell work, right? Find the percent number. Now, could you have turned this percent into a decimal and multiplied by the number? Yes, you could have. I want you to get better at knowing off the top of your head, uh, but whatever technique you feel is your, your strongest one as we go through these next several lessons, use that to help you figure it out. Notice that these are techniques uh, and they could be whatever one sticks the best to you, which one you feel is um, better, is the one that I recommend you use, all right? Now, proportional reasoning, we talked about that, involves uh, that involves thinking about relationships and making comparisons of quantities and values. We talked about miles per hour in the last year. We talked about um, cookies per tray. We talked about things that were equivalent to each other, having a constant of proportionality, having a unit rate. Those are things that represent proportional relationships or even the understanding of proportional relationships. Proportional reasoning is to know that there needs to be a constant or something that shows that this fraction is equivalent to that fraction because there's a constant that multiplied to get you from one to the other. Okay, I want to talk about calculating percentages with proportional reasoning. Now, as you know, these are word problems here. I recommend as we read the word problem, read it one time through. Second time, underline or highlight the important information. And the third time, let's focus on that important information and try to write out an equation or some type of expression to help us solve it. But let's first read to see what we're even talking about. Angel misses 20% of the free throws he attempts in a season. Okay, so Angel obviously is playing basketball. He misses 20% of the free throws he attempts in that particular season. He, How many total free throws did he attempt if he missed 31? Okay. So Angel misses 20% of the free throws he attempts in a season. How many total free throws did he attempt if he missed 31? Identify the missing value. Now, we are gonna use proportional reasoning, proportional relationships to solve this. I talked about a little bit in the last lesson, being able to set it up, right? And the way I, I kind of started to explain it to you in the last video, in the last lesson, is I said to you, remember, Proportional relationships can look something like this. Percent over 100 is equal to part 
over whole. Okay? Where most situations, you're either going to find the part, or you're going to find the whole, or you're going to find the percent. Those are the three. The hundred on the bottom is always going to be there because you know percent, oh, it's always over 100. That's kind of how it is. Now, I'm going to start by filling in what I know, right? I actually read it one more time. This time, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to highlight what's important. Angel misses 20% of the free throws he attempts in a season. How many total free throws did he attempt? How, we don't know how many he attempted if he missed 31, right? So this is the information that we need. He misses 20% of the free throws he attempts in the season. How many free throws, how many, how many total free throws did he attempt if he missed 31? So we have two numbers here, 20% and 31. I told you before that normally these are your three components and I'm just going to, you know, I'm, a, I'm just going to circle the three components that I need you to understand that you're looking for. Uh, percent, part, or whole. Those are your three parts that you're always looking for, the three things that you're looking for in the, in the problem. When you get word problems like this or when they're asking you for stuff, most situations, you're missing one of these three. The out of 100 is always there. So how about we set up a proportional relationship? Let's set it up and let's just keep the 100 on the bottom because the 100 always stays. Now we got to fill in what we know, okay? And when we fill in what we know, we're going to identify are we missing the percent? Are we missing the part? Are we missing the whole? I'll say it again. Are we missing the percent, the part, or the whole? Angel misses 20%. Oh, we have the percent. That's the percent there, so let's put 20 above this. So we have the percent. Now the part and the whole. Do we have the part? Do we have the whole? Let's keep reading. It says, how many total free throws? How many total free throws? Okay, hold on. Let me show line this. How many total free throws? That sounds like the whole. That sounds like the entire amount of free throws he shot. But they want to know how many, which means that I think we're missing the whole. It says here, did he attempt if he missed 31? Hold on, but he... 20% was 31, 20% he missed, which means if 31 is how many he missed, that must mean that that is the 20%. So 31 goes there because 31 is the part. So 31 is the part and 20% is your percentage, okay? What we're missing here is the whole. We are missing the whole, okay? I'm just gonna write that with the black one, just so you can see that what we're really missing here is the whole. Now, it comes to the place where we say, well, how do we find that? Me and you, we talked about a couple of things before. We talked about cross multiplication. Okay. We talked about cross multiplication. I would recommend us use cross multiplication here. Okay. We can cross multiply. There's a couple ways to do this. Let's, let's talk about cross multiplication first. When I cross multiply, I am getting 3,100 is equal to 20. And let's call that question mark X because you and I both know if we're missing a number, we can call that a variable. So let's call it X, okay? So we end up getting 20 X is equal to 3,100. Because we have solved for one step equations before, we know that's multiplication. The opposite of multiplication is division. So we're gonna divide both sides by 20. we end up getting x is equal to 155. Okay. And that's what we end up getting. So what does 155 mean? This 155 is our whole. All right, because it's a word problem, you and I know that Miss Wolf is going to expect you to write words. Total free throws. Total free throws. Um, angel attempts. Is. 
And I just want this one fifty five minutes when we go to solve it, all right? So we first set up our proportion percent over one hundred is equal to part of a whole. We say out of the three that we know we need to find, which two did they give us, and which one are we missing? Right? We set it up. Say, okay, we're missing the whole. We're missing the part. We're missing the percent. We cross multiply here to find that missing one. I substitute the question mark with the variable. I substitute with x. When I cross multiply, 20 times x gives me 20x. 31 times 100 gives me 3100. All right, great. Now I have 20x, which we know that's multiplication. I need to get x by itself. I solve by dividing by 20 on both sides. I get x is equal to 155. It's a word problem. I need to explain that uh, that missing value, that 155. So I say the total free throws angel attempts is 155. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you were to put 155 there and you decided to do 31 divided by 155, you'll get 0.2, which is the same thing you'll get if you do 20 divided by 100. You get 0.2. Notice that they're the same. Right? This is where we practice dividing these to get the same exact number to see if they are indeed proportional. And they are. Okay? Excellent. Let's look at B. First thing I'm going to do, once again, is I'm going to start off by just writing my percent over 100 is equal to my part over whole. This is the first thing I recommend you write when you're starting to work on problems. Percent problems demand that make you recognize, okay, am I dealing with part, percent, whole? What am I looking at? What am I looking for? Okay. All right. So I started by writing percent over 100 is equal to part over whole. I read it. I'm going to read it. 1,300 people attended a football game. 1,300 people attended a football game. If 4% of the people who attended were teenagers, 4% of those people were teenagers, how many teenagers attended the game? Identify the missing values in the diagram. I'm sorry about the yawn. I want to highlight what's important here. 1,300 people attended the football game. 4% of those people are teenagers. The question they ask me is important because the question is very important here. They want to know how many teenagers attended the game. How many teenagers attended the game? So let's fill in what we know. First thing, let's start off with by drawing our Lines equal to another line. And we know the bottom here is 100 because 100, 100 stays there. Um, do we have the percent? Do we have the percent? And the question is, the answer is yes, we do. We have 4%, right? It's 4 over 100. Ms. Thorford, why are you not turning that into a decimal? Because we're leaving it as 4 over 100. If I were to divide that, I would get the decimal. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Notice in the first one, I left it as 20, not 0.2. Because I'm not changing the percentages to decimals here, not in this type of technique. This is another technique. This is a technique called proportional reasoning, where you set up two fractions that equal to each other. Whereas the other one, we was divide, we quickly turned it into a percent, a decimal, and we multiplied by the whole. We would not multiply by the part. We would just divide it for the part. Let me let me explain that again. Notice here, if I were to change this twenty percent to 0 0.2, I would not multiply by 0.31. I would say 31 divided by 0.2, and that would give me 155, right? That's another technique. That's the technique we talked about yesterday. This technique here is saying, how about you set them up as proportional relationships? Identify percent part whole. Find out which one you're missing, and that's the one you want to go for. Now, in this problem here, they tell me we have 4%. That means 4 of 100. I got the percent. Good. Did they give me the part? Did they give me the whole? What is 1,300? What does that represent? The people who attended a football game. Okay, people attend a football game. Is there a bigger amount of number that we need to look for? Or is there a smaller number that we need to look for? If 4% of the people who attended the game were teenagers, how many teenagers attended the game? They want to know the teenagers, which is a part of the 1300. So what it tells me is that the whole here is 1300. And we are missing this part. And I'm just going to put X here. I'm not going to put question mark. Now we need to cross multiply. We need to cross multiply here because we got to figure out what the teenagers, how many teenagers rather, attended this game. We have 100 multiplied by x is 100x is equal to 4 times 1300, which is 5200. We draw a line down the equal sign because this is a one step equation and we want to solve for the variable. In this case, the variable is x. 
We see 100 next to x. We know that means multiplication. I want to do the inverse of multiplication, which is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 100. When I divide by 100, that gets rid of 100 that's next to x and just leaves me with x. Now I can say, OK, what's 5,200 divided by 100? That answer is 50. Because it's a word problem, we need to explain what that means. Okay, and I'm just going to try to draw these arrows to show you that that's what I did. I cross multiplied. Okay, I'm going to write uh, there were 52 52 teenagers. Teenagers. I'm sorry about the glitches. Um, that attended the game. So it was 52 teenagers that attended the game. That's what this 52 number is representing. Now, as you work on the independent practice, your goal is to set up the proportional reasoning. I get it. Could you turn it quickly into a percent to a decimal and then multiply it by the whole? Yes. Could you divide it by the part? Yes, you could. However, I want you to practice using this way. I know that if you, if you like the other way, which I personally like the other way, that's good. Try to also try to do it exactly this way. And then if you leave yourself enough space, Practice using the other technique as well. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? That way you can get a better handle on both techniques as you go through it, okay? Thank you so much for joining me with another math lesson. If there are any questions at all, feel free to leave them in Google Classroom where I will gladly help you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.